Hi, today I'm talking to Intizar, and I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself. Sure. Hey, Alex. I'm uh, Intizar Ahmed. I'm uh, a geotechnical engineer in training practicing in uh, Vancouver, BC, at a mid sized consulting firm where we serve ma mainly the uh, civil engineering infrastructure uh, industry. Um, I went to UBC for geological engineering and graduated in 2019, after which, uh, well, while at UBC, I worked for 16 months in a variety of global consulting firms and geotechnical engineering roles as a co-op student. And after graduating, I joined uh, another firm, a uh, mid-sized firm this time, and worked for two years in the same capacity as an EIT, after which I went to University of California at Berkeley in the U.S., for a master's degree in civil engineering, specializing in geosystems engineering, which I completed in 2022. Since then, I've returned to my uh, previous employer and have continued on my career uh, in the same path. Okay, it was really cool. What are some types of projects you've worked on in the past or maybe you're currently working on that really stood out to you and kind of, if you can go into what you did in those sure. projects? Sure. The types of projects I work on, as, as I mentioned, I'm a geotechnical uh, consultant. So the firm I work at is a specialty uh, consulting firm. Therefore, other clients, you know, be it the city or a utility owner or other engineering firms that are more, you know, on the civil or structural side will uh, retain us to provide geotechnical engineering services. Um, and the projects I tend to work on uh, I have worked on, intend to work on currently, uh, involve everything from utilities, like you're thinking like sewer tunnels and, and so forth, to flood protection structures, like, you know, dikes and pump stations, to transportation projects like highways and bridges, and even buildings from like mid-rise to high-rise buildings. So I've done a little bit on all of that, and then ongoing projects are a similar flavor. Um, and the role I have had so far and currently have varies between either when I'm very junior early on, usually a field engineer role, you know, overseeing the construction or site investigation phases where we're trying to figure out what's in the ground, um, to now more recently becoming a project engineer where I'm the project manager uh, representing my firm. And, uh, and, you know, oftentimes the two overlap a lot too, where I'm doing my own field work because I'm transitioning sort of from the junior to the intermediate role as I work towards becoming a professional licensed engineer. Okay, very cool. What would you say then an average day looks like for you? Maybe when you're starting out as an EIT, more in the field. Sure, sure. There, since I'm in consulting, we don't tend to have an average day unless it's in um, like a big construction project or something where you're out there in the field doing uh, similar things like overseeing defoundation installation or, or doing drilling. In my experience, my first couple of years, and I'm very grateful for having that sort of opportunity in my firm, I got a variety of exposure and a variety of projects. So I've had days where it includes, you know, a part-time field assignment where I go and look at a, uh, do a construction field review for a building foundation, for example, you know, take a look at the uh, ground and see if the construction contractor is building the foundations the way we intended in our design and to going back to the office and coordinating another geotechnical investigation where we're planning to go out and, and investigate another site for a, um, a different project, for example. I'm just kind of planning that. And then on the same day, I might be, you know, uh, working on a proposal, trying to win another project, and even working on analysis where I'm looking at perhaps uh, stability of slopes, for, for example. So I've, I've had days where I've worked on four or five different projects in the same day and doing all those tasks. Or I've even had the same days where I'm doing all those tasks for the same project because it's so big. Um, so there isn't an average day where I can confidently say uh, that, that you know on January 15th, I did the exact same thing as December 2nd. Like it, it doesn't really work that way in my experience in consulting, at least in geotechnical consulting. So, so it's very dynamic and and uh which is what keeps it interesting so okay that's cool to hear it's very cool to hear what would you say then is some of the best things about geotechnical engineering the best thing uh, some of the best things are involved in geotechnical engineering is working with um, natural materials with, with it being soil 
Um, there's an inherent variability to soil, everything from, you know, like the size of the grains and, and the structure to like on, on a microscopic level, to mineralogy and things like that, to a macroscopic level where, where there's geology has certain um, randomness to it where you can have everything from a fault, which, you know, can produce earthquakes and things like that from a large scale structural problems. Um, so that variability from the micro to the macro is, is very interesting and makes it very challenging uh, to perform your duties. And it's exactly why in certain geologic environments, you'll have geotechnical engineers always in demand and always busy. Uh, I think that's the best thing. The work is always interesting. Um, and the other thing is, you know, getting to work outside. There's a lot of people who, for whom this would uh, be a main factor. They really like hiking or they like, you know, have uh, rock collections as a kid or, you know, jumping in puddles, things like that. Um, I'm not claiming to be one of those people, but there are a lot of people who, who really um, enjoy that sort of you know, going outside as part of your job. So that's a very big positive for a lot of people. And I guess the last thing, and this one's really, you know, uh, something I'm grateful for is geotechnical engineers work on almost every type of civil engineering project. Um, if it doesn't float or fly, it's typically on the ground and therefore we get to get involved in, you know, whereas, you know, perhaps a, a bridge engineer might just do bridges, a, a structural engineer might do buildings or bridges, a transportation engineer might just do roadways or highways or whatever. As a geotechnical engineer, I do all of that. I, I get involved in all of that. Again, being part of a whole variety of projects is extremely uh, rewarding, and it also helps from like a job outlook kind of thing, right? Um, if civil isn't doing great, which is, uh, you know, we can go to mining, for example, and, and there's a big geotechnical demand for that too. So it's, a, it's the flexibility of, of adapting to a whole bunch of projects where uh, geotechnical engineering is highly relevant. Uh, it's a highly relevant issue in almost everything, uh, civil engineering or mining engineering related. Okay, okay. So on the flip side of that coin then, what would you say is one of the more challenging things about working as a geotechnical engineer? Sure. The, uh, the great thing about geotech was the variability, but it's also sometimes the worst thing where you can kind of expose yourself to a lot of liability. Um, I don't have a source for you or the numbers, but um, I've heard these, and you can ask any lawyer, your lawyers who go to your civil engineering um, but in law class, geotechnical engineers tend to be the most sued type of engineers just because, they get involved in most lawsuits just because of the amount of risk they take on in their projects. There's ways to work around that with limitations of liability, proper language, like proper review, things like that. Um, but, you know, like I had a professor at UBC who, who he was giving an anecdote about uh, one of his colleagues a very experienced colleague in the field where he once asked that experienced colleague, uh, you know, person X, how many, uh, have you ever been sued? And that was the question. And, and, and the reply was, I am currently involved in three active lawsuits or something like that. And that's just the way it goes sometimes, right? And then that's probably the, the biggest con, I would say, or most significant con to our profession. And the other thing is, like, if, if you're not one of those people who are all about being outside and, and you know, the field work can, you know, sometimes we have, you know, the dirtier situations or, or bad weather or, or tough conditions. Um, so it's both a pro. So I've, the, both the cons I mentioned are also pros, depending on how you, you uh, look at it. But, you know, I think with any job, uh, nobody's going to be happy 100% of the time. I, I think that's an unrealistic expectation to have. Um, but those are two of the worst things I would say about geotechnical engineering. Yeah, fair enough. Those are some like good points you brought up. And definitely outdoors when it's raining can be can be a trudge walking through the mud. So I've always made sure to invest in a good pair of boots. Sure. I'm wondering if you can think back to like your university experience and your studies. What did you spend most time studying? Because for civil engineering, like I didn't know in high school that we'd be doing a lot of like dirt mechanics or soil mechanics as a civil engineering student or like even hydrotechnical stuff. So I'm wondering if there was anything you were studying that kind of surprised you. 
Um, so I studied geological engineering. So the expectation going in was a lot of that, what you call dirt mechanics of soil or rock. Um, so th those weren't surprising. Those were expectations. Um, that's just the technical fundamentals. However, the more perhaps surprising stuff was um, the mineralogy aspect of it or the, the geology, some of the geology side, where at the time it felt um, trivial to study some of those like very like, like mineral formulas of, of, you know, very specific things. Um, to be honest, I don't use any of that information now. So to some extent, it wasn't necessary to get me to where I am now. But the flip side is, let's say I went to civil engineering and studied that, there would be some courses there I probably wouldn't be using in my workplace either. It's just a different type of exposure to be able to get to speak in the same language as some of your colleagues, which in my case were would be geologists versus, uh, versus structural engineers, for example. So uh, the shocker, I guess, would be the all the geology type courses. But if your question being, what did I spend my most most of my time studying? It would be the stuff you mentioned. It would be more soil mechanics and rock mechanics and, and hydrogeology and things like that, um, where I took a lot of courses in that in undergrad, and then I took even more in grad. And the more I take, it 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 reinforces that I know very little, and we know very little. Um, and it, it's uh, it just makes you appreciate the deep complexity in in what we do um so so yeah a lot a lot of time spent on the mechanics side on soil and rock and uh and even water yeah i gotta agree with you on that when i was taking my soil mechanics course like a lot of the time you're just like oh it's dirt can't be that complex but it's actually really complex dirt or maybe dirt's not the right word soil rock all those sure. types of subsurface stuff mm -hmm. one last question for you then before we wrap up I'm wondering if there's any advice you would give to students who are considering going into geotechnical or geological engineering, maybe how to get, how to learn more about it or things they can do to prepare. Sure. Um, and the, the, this advice isn't really unique to, to geological or geotechnical engineering. I think I would give the same advice to anyone studying even electrical engineering is you should be reaching out to uh, people who are working in that field. The academic exposure is not necessarily representative of the field, be it for better or for worse. So I would look at professional societies. If, if you don't already have connections via your school or, or um, you know, family even, uh, I think I would reach out to a relevant technical society and try to get involved that way. I suppose this is more uh, easier to do once you're in university, but uh, I think almost any I can think of any, every engineer I can think of would, would be willing to talk to any any level of student, be it even an elementary student, um, to help uh, give exposure to their career. So, for instance, in geo geotechnical engineering, uh, I would look towards um, reaching out to something like the Canadian Geotechnical Society, where the local chapter in Vancouver is called the Vancouver uh, Geotechnical Society, reaching out to some of the people listed there um, to do you know what we're doing here pretty much like informational interviews and then have these kinds of conversations um opportunity to see even job shadow like i know there's just take your kid to work day as a student i mean you know i'm sure as a high school student i'm sure it doesn't have to be your kid you can take you know just show someone um our field all right and um so i think that that's the biggest thing is that's what students should do if they want to learn more about our field is, is go through that. You know, YouTube and, and, and books can, can only do so much, but having these organic conversations are very, very important. And for students that are already in school, I think um, to, to prepare for an engineering career, they, they should you know, focus on everything from the foundational technical knowledge from their coursework, um, growing their network with their peers and even outside of school, and then building up, you know, it's things like your teamwork and, and communication skills, because that's like half the job is the communication and teamwork skills. It's not necessarily how well you do the math. Yeah, I will, it's a really good idea to get involved in like, especially in undergrad, like design teams and student societies relevant to what you're studying. Mm 